Now, I would like to bring up Lisa Gottlieb. Come on up, Lisa. Hey, listen. I was so ready to quit. I was ready to quit. And I do not quit for anything. I work in the Washtenaw County Juvenile Jail. It's called the County Youth Center, but it's the Juvie Jail. I've been there for 14 years. I've been called all kinds of names. I've been told to do all kinds of things with body parts that are not mine. It's a really good job. And I don't take anything personally. But you know, when you don't take things personally, you step back a little bit. I didn't want to burn out. I want this job for a long time. I went in every day. And I'd say to a kid, you want me to help you today? They didn't want my help, fine. But I'd go in the next day and I would ask them again. And I did that year after year. And then a few years ago, after years and years of practicing yoga myself, I decided I was going to become a yoga teacher. And I was going to teach yoga. And I was going to teach it in the juvenile jail. Because I had read all this research yoga is so good for incarcerated youth. And they have these miraculous changes. And these amazing things happen. And I came back from my yoga teacher training, and I was passionate, and I was invested, and I took everything personally. And I brought those kids into that first yoga class, and they would not do a thing I asked them to do. They took my props. I had these beautiful foam yoga props, and they would use their fingernails and draw all kinds of words in them that you did not want to see anywhere around where you were doing yoga. <laughs> I would ask them to do the simplest of postures, and they would do the exact opposite. Most of the time, they would just lay down on the mat. Now, there's a place for restorative yoga, but that was not it. <laughs> I'm going to tell you a couple things about the juvenile jail. I can't tell you very much because it's a secure facility, and I don't want you coming in and breaking somebody out sometime and having it be my fault. I can tell you this, though. It smells in there like lemony, sickly sweet cleaning solution and fried food. And then there's this underlying bouquet of microwave popcorn. <laughs> Here's the other thing about the juvenile jail. There is nowhere a youth can sit or lay down and be comfortable ever. Whether they are there for two days or six months or a year, they will never be physically comfortable. All the chairs are hard. They sleep on beds that are extruded hard foam. They're warm. They get three meals a day. The people who work there are kind and firm and wonderful role models. We don't want it to be a nice place. Why? We don't want them to come back. Let's get back to yoga. I had had a terrible class. It was really bad. I was being called names. No one was doing what they were supposed to be doing. And I was taking it so personally because I love yoga so much. And I wanted to help these kids so much. I was working way harder than they were. And I was done. Then the next day, it was time for yoga class, and I didn't want to do it. I'd been dreading it. The thing is, all the kids had been so bad, they'd been put in their rooms. And only one kid, Cody, was left to come to yoga class. Cody was a big kid. I don't know, 5'10", 5'11", bulky, heavy, but he was only 14. You know what happens when you've got a 14-year-old kid who's big? You expect them to act older than they are, and they can't, and he had not had an easy time. He was intimidating. He was sullen. He never made eye contact. I never saw him smile, but I had to take him to yoga class in this huge gym with bright lights, little windows up at the top, and at that moment, I looked at him, and I didn't see this hard, tough kid. I saw this kid who was sad and lonely, and I decided I was going to do a restorative practice with him. And I got all my props. I got blankets, and I got pillows, and I got these foam things. And of course, I didn't touch him, because nobody can touch anybody at the juvenile jail. But I set him up in this restorative posture where he was completely supported from top to bottom. And I saw him settle in and settle down. And he looked up to me and he said, Miss Gottlieb, 
this is the most comfortable I have ever been in my life. And I said, Cody, are you being sarcastic? Because he was a really sarcastic kid. And he started to cry and looked up at me and he said, no, I'm serious. And right then I knew it was okay to take things personally. I was going to build my practice and I was going to take everything personally because that's where the magic happened. Thank you. Thank you.